give honor to God. Amen. Who is our everything. Amen. He is so loving and so kind. I just truly thank him for even having me on his mind. Amen. If spirits have minds and if they think, because there's so much about God, I won't proclaim to know. I only say what I hear folks say and what I think about. But we really don't even know who God really is. Amen. Anyone that could sit on top of lightning and thunder as a chair, I don't know how you know that person. Uh, if it's a person. Amen. But we certainly understand he is merciful. And loving and to his Savior, his sweet son, Jesus Christ, who secured our salvation. Amen. And to the Holy Ghost that abides in the hearts of every believer. Amen. I'm not going to categorize whether you have it or not. That's your business. Amen. But you have a right to the Holy Ghost. Or in some cases, Holy Spirit. Some people now act like Holy Ghost is a misnomer, but it's not. Uh, that was in King James before the NIV. Amen. And, and it's in the Greek. So they had that in the original language. Amen. We honor our esteemed clergy on today. God bless you, prophet. Amen. To the absence of Elder Ronald Ralph and to Elder Bruce Ralph. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for them. To all the men of the house, if you're in your place. Amen. The Bible said, oh, find me a man. Amen. If you're in your place. You are blessed, amen, and to all the mothers of Zion, to the missionaries, amen, God bless you, to all the doorkeepers and the Levites and praise worshipers, we honor God for you on this morning, amen, amen, and we certainly are thankful and blessed this morning to have with us district missionary, amen, amen. Gwendolyn, Yvette, Ralph, Amen. I want to say to the saints, thank you so much for what you've done. And I think we're just about out of the woods in a sense because we won't need you to, sh to, to bring us any more vittles. <laughs> Amen. And we thank you for your diligence and for your concern and for your love and for your most esteemed dishes that you sent. Amen. I tell you, they, they really... They, they really did uh, help. I kind of felt like uh, my son did when he was young. Uh, I kind of felt like, man, being a preacher have benefits. <laughs> you know, he told Maya one day, he said, you know, you complaining, but whew, being a pastor's child, we get benefits. Right. Amen. But we thank you for the love. Amen. Amen. Because you didn't have to do it. <laughs> Amen. And all of you who have given money and then shared your culinary skills what a blessing amen. amen and that's what it's all about and i wish that this was something that we could do if we had the capacity when people need our help amen, amen. that's what it's all about it's about being able to come to the aid of those and in most cases who can't do anything for you amen, amen. but god has been so wonderfully magnified in that area amen, amen. and so today and continuing with our theme from last year about spiritual health, how many of y'all know it's not good enough to get all that and just stop? Amen. 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 Uh, this year, the Lord impressed upon me to tell you our theme for the whole year is we are not finished. We must remain focused. And I think that's our biggest problem would y'all do me a favor today? Pray for me today that I won't get so excited and start hollering and screaming. Amen. I want to judiciously deliver this word in, in a, um, how would I say, in a strategic way. Uh, sometimes I look at my video and have to turn it off because I'm like, man, I was hollering like that. I don't remember all that. But I guess when you're passionate about something and you want to get something across, I don't think it's difficult to change octaves. Uh, you know, uh, my mother was notorious for that. When she was really, when she was really poignant about uh, what wasn't clean, she wasn't really, uh, you know, 
sounding the same. Her little voice went up. Amen. For, 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 for once in my life, y'all may not believe this, but I've seen Mother Wilburn change octaves. Yeah, that was strange to me. Amen. But so sometimes when you're passionate about things, you get excited. And when you get excited, it happens. But I want to talk to you today about something that's going to help us really remain focused and go forward because I think this is the part to me that we have in our everyday lives that sometimes defeat us and cause us not to move forward because I think we forget really who we are. I think we forget whose we are. Uh, the song said today, uh, he's calling us to a higher place of praise. What that means is the way that you've been praising God now should change. It should be on a higher level. It should be on a more disciplined level. You should be doing things now more to benefit and to magnify who you're talking about than what you used to. Amen. If you used to be ashamed on a high level, you can't be shamed. If you barely clap your hands on a high level, you got to clap them till they hurt. Amen. Uh, because anytime you move forward, you're getting better. It's when you stay the same that's dangerous. But our theme today is our Christian life must begin with faith. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. If you didn't begin this lifestyle by faith, it's going to be difficult for you to move forward. It's okay to be invited to a church. It's okay to, to come and join. It's okay uh, to hear the choir and to do all these little majestic things. But if faith is not the premise, you will be barren and defeat it in everything you do. Not only will you not have a strong mind, you will be more than double-minded because your mind will not be able to succinct with God and you can focus on the disciplines that need to happen. Amen? So faith is one of those disciplines and anchors that keeps you in a certain posture regardless of what's going on. In other words, your circumstances doesn't dictate how strong and robust your faith is. The circumstance only comes to see and to prove to you whether you believe what you've been talking about. Because could I submit to you today, and I know you probably never heard this, but there is nothing that could kill your faith. Got one taker. One person clapped their hands. But see, that shows how far we are off from what the origination is. The Bible said, our faith overcometh the world. And this is our faith. Because we know he hear us when we pray. So if God hears you when you pray, that means there is nothing that happens in your life that could silence your voice. So 2 Peter 1 and 1 says it like this. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. Highlight that. With us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the living word from the living God. I want to particularly have you to look at again and contemplate, circle, highlight, color, and do whatever you need to do to begin in the verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. See, your like precious faith causes everything to multiply. See, it's one thing 
for grace to be around. But when you're a believer, your grace is multiplied. It's okay for faith to be around. But when you are a believer, your faith multiplies. See, if that were not true, he never would have left on record. We go from faith to faith. How does that look? We go from kindergarten to college. It's the same principle. If you really get into the structure and adhere and, and embrace the teaching of going from nursery school to college, you have no problem. The problem is you want to not go and think you could get a degree. You don't want to be part of the process and think you're supposed to be proficient. But you got to be part of the process. And the part of the process, the only part of the process, is your beginning life in Christ has to begin with faith. I want you to look at that verse. Peter called it like precious faith. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, neighbor, what kind of faith do you have? Now, for mo most of y'all, y'all just been calling it faith. But the Bible calls it your most holy faith. Peter calls it your most precious faith. It means that our standing with the Lord today is the same as that of the apostles centuries ago. What is Peter saying? Peter is saying, you have the same precious faith that Jesus had. Oh, 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 oh. How many of y'all think, because I know you have, that's why we've been doing the way been, we've been doing. How many of y'all think that Jesus and those apostles had something different than y'all had. Don't say no, because it is true you thought that. You know why most of us thought that? Because when things start happening to us, we try to say, you know, only if I could have been there when Jesus was there. Only if I could have really met Jesus, maybe I'd be a little further along. That's not true. Do you believe our Father will give you a substandard faith? Do you? Y'all scared to answer that. You know why you won't answer it? You know why you won't answer it courageously? Because all your life, that's what you've been thinking. You've been thinking the faith you have ain't enough. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. You've been thinking the faith you have is not comparative to what you've been reading about. This is why you haven't been able to perform miracles for God. This is why you're wishy-washy. This is why every now and then you're up and you're down. This is why you really feel like you're saved today, but when something happened next week, oh, what's the use? But Peter called it he was writing to these people in, in, in Asia, and he said, the people who have the most precious-like faith. He didn't say precious, different faith. He said precious-like. It's impossible for you to have a child and they look like you and you make them subpar. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me say it like this. Identical twins cannot be inferior to one another because they're the same. They look the same. Some of them even have the same mannerisms. Oh, y'all not going to talk to me. So what I'm trying to get you to see today, because, see, I want you to move forward. We have the same precious faith God gave Jesus. We have the same precious faith that Peter and Paul had. 
We have the same faith Moses had. You don't have nothing subpar. God has given you all things pertaining to godliness and holiness. In other words, when you come to church and believe God, you are a complete saint. But the problem is, I stopped hollering, didn't I? I caught myself. But we think that we can meander around in this pool of mediocrity. No. You're supposed to be doing great things. Sister Ralph ain't superhuman. I'm not superhuman. You think the things God been doing for us is because we're superhuman? She's a person just like you. She just made up in her mind she's going to be disciplined to God and she's going to wait before God until God surrender what she's praying for. Yeah. See, when you understand what you got on the inside, he even said that he won't deny faith. So if he gave you something to please him, why are you crying about what you can't do? And then you have the nerve to quote, we have not because we ask not. The only reason why you ain't asking is because you don't believe you can have it. <laughs> yeah, Lord Jesus. This may take a couple of messages, but I need to get this across. They had no special advantage over us because they was privileged to walk with Jesus. Jesus was there and still had a devil. We don't need to be getting upset. I can't preach like Jesus and I don't have folk follow me like Jesus. Well, guess what? If Jesus would have had a 300-member church, how many demons would he have had? <laughs> can't you see? that he still would have been Jesus. I don't care how many demons were there. If he had 12 and only have one, do the math. Suppose he had a mega church with two services. <laughs> See how we conjecture things and we try to act like we're really trying to shift things. All you're doing is defeating your own self. It don't matter how many demons is around, that does nothing to your faith. Only if I could see him with my own eyes. Only if I could share the same miracles. Well, they saw all that. And could I submit to you, even after he told them who he was and what he wanted them to do, do you know them church folks put their faith down and went fishing? What do you think Easter's about? The cliff note says Jesus died, and when he came back to see how they was doing, they all left the church. That's what Easter's about. That's why he rose. They couldn't stay saved three days. And they looked at Jesus every day for three and a half years. He was their pastor. How... How, how demoralizing is that for a pastor? You teaching folks, teaching them, teaching, and you get hurt and come back and the church is empty. How much sadness do you think Jesus had to have? He even asked him, said, have I taught you this long? Oh, ye of such little faith. And he tried to give them faith. And I don't believe Jesus was teaching something subpar to them. He was teaching them what God wanted them to know. <laughs> it's not necessary to see the Lord with our own human eyes in order to love him. We don't have to see Jesus to trust him. We don't have to even see Jesus to share in his glory. 
And you're pivoting from your own steadfastness because you don't understand who you belong to. Maybe that'll catch up with you. The sound effects are different in a microphone. I'm, wait, I, I'm waiting on the boom to hit y'all. Y'all ain't heard it yet? Y'all banking on wishing y'all could see him when seeing him won't make a difference if you don't believe him. <laughs> they saw Jesus and didn't believe it was Jesus. If they believed him, they wouldn't have called him Elias. If they really believed him, they wouldn't have called him or some prophet. And if they really believed him, they wouldn't have never cru crucified him. If they believed him, Jesus wouldn't have go. He wouldn't have to leave helping society and go to church and say, who do you say I am? <laughs> that proves I don't care what you say. It's about what you really embrace and what you believe. Because when you believe this thing, you're going to live it. When you really have the faith that Jesus had delivered unto you, you're not going to let circumstances stop you from being who God started you to be. See, there ought to be a time in your life where you get tired of you defeating yourself. Cliff note, the devil don't have nothing to do with what's going on with you. <laughs> blame it on him if you want to, but you can't blame him on what he's doing to you and somebody else is getting that done in, in Chicago and then somebody else is getting that done in Sacramento. The devil's not omnipresent. Right. See, we, 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 we don't even believe the, the word. The only one that's omnipresent is God. He's the only one that could be everywhere at the same time. And we blame Satan. No, it's you. It's you because you don't believe what you have. And see, this is why I'm going to be teaching on the doctrine of the Holy Ghost again, because some of y'all have forgotten who the Holy Ghost really is. You have a power in you that could never be defeated. <laughs> and it's not going to work just because you go to Rehoboth. It's not going to work just because you know Pastor Ralph. And it ain't going to work just because I pray for you. The only way it's going to work is you're going to have to believe you got it. Let me ask you a question. What would happen to all those great men and women in the Bible if they had to wait on speaking in tongues? Holy Ghost hadn't even got there yet. But Moses was calling locusts and hell and <laughs> you know why? Because God told him what was going to happen, he believed it. He didn't have no Bible to turn to. Let me see. You know, the Bible said, trust, to, uh, you know, they don't even, can't even quote the scriptures. The scripture says, uh, uh, test the spirit by the word. The Bible don't say that. They say, try the spirits and see whether they be of God. See, you can't try no spirit if you don't believe you have a spirit. See, and a lot of times we rely on what folks say. That's why Jesus went and preached to the prison, the prison is in the hull of the earth, because they died in the faith. They died believing Jesus was coming. 
And what made it so great was they didn't even go to hell then because they had to be kept away from those who were going into uh, eternal damnation because Jesus hadn't came yet. So Jesus went and freed them. Read your book. In St. Matthew's, when he came and freed them, the Bible said graves opened up and folks start walking the streets again. Notice everybody didn't get up. Only the folks that had the faith. See, 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 if you're really going to be in this, you got to have the faith. Well, what is faith? It's plain old confidence. Y'all done heard this illustration 50 million times, but I'm going to give it to you again. None of y'all check to see if you weren't going to fall when you sat down. You, di you didn't check the schematic drawings and see what the tents and pressures were on what side. and You didn't check to see if there was a crack in the metal. You just flopped down. And some of y'all were so tired, you could have broke the chair. <laughs> but you had so much what? In what? And you got more faith in the chair than God? You got more faith than in the pilot? Flying the plane? He was drunk all night, and he flying you to Chicago. And you got the nerve to go to sleep. Some of us better not put all our trust in them folk, because we just seen a door pop off in midair. And they said, lied and said they had the best specs ever. Can't you see what I'm trying to show you? There's nothing proven. There's nothing unshakable than what God has given you. First Peter 1 and 8 says, Whom having not seen ye, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. In other words, at the end of your faith in this life, your reward is going to be salvation. You haven't seen him, but you've been believing him. And some kind of way, you have unspeakable joy, and it's full of glory. You don't even know where the joy came from. But because you've been believing in God, your soul is flooded with joy. That is leading you to salvation. This faith is in a person. That person is Jesus Christ. It's not Biggie Small. It ain't Puff Daddy. <laughs> Y'all forget about Pac, he been gone. The only person your faith need to be in is Jesus. See, I can't, hardly, I can't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't broke through this, this, this staunch wall y'all have. Nothing excites y'all. Nothing moves y'all, because y'all going to believe in who y'all want to believe in. But if I were you, I wouldn't wait till the bottom fall out to believe in Jesus. <laughs> See? Even, even, even Pastor Winans had to tell all the people at Whitney Houston's funeral, I was so glad he did it. He said, y'all getting up here talking about faith and about this happened and that happened. He said, you can't add faith at the end of your life. He said, you got to have faith all through. Yeah. 
your life. So you can't just believe in Jesus and you about to go. You should have been believing in Jesus that started this thing. And I don't care how many ups and downs you have, you believe him until the end. He gave us this precious like faith. He didn't say precious different faith. We have the same faith. Jesus is the son of God. He's the savior. From the very outset of this letter, Peter affirmed the deity of Jesus Christ. He called him God and our savior. And these are not two different people. It's just that when you have the kind of faith Pete had and he saw what Jesus was doing and knew where he came from, you would understand that God and Jesus is the same person. It ain't no two spirits. It's only one spirit. But there's three different administrations. God Almighty. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the Holy Ghost. The Spirit God sent back because of Jesus. It's all the same source. Your faith didn't come from Cracker Jacks. It came from God. He gave you the same faith. Paul even used the same simian of vernaculars. You can check that out in Titus 2 and 10. I want you to read it. Titus 2 and 10 when you get a chance. And I want you to read Titus 3 and 4. People who matured in the faith and knew the real revelation about God knew who they were. They didn't mix it up. That's why they call him Jesus the Lord our God. That's not a misprint. He is God. 2 Corinthians 7 tells you, and God was in Jesus, reconciling the world back to himself. He had to do it or no, cause nobody else could do it. Oh, Lord. Paul reminded his readers that Jesus Christ is the Savior by repeating this exalted title all throughout 1 Peter. And it wasn't strange. Let me tell you why. I got a few more minutes. I'm not done, but let me tell you why. See, you have to understand God and Jesus' plan of salvation wasn't coming to totally be exclusive. God always uses familiarities. For instance, Jesus never taught farmers anything about laying bricks. In the Bible, whenever he used parables to farmers, he always talked about farming. He always talked about vineyards and cattle and wheat and all that stuff. Then when he called himself the wise master builder, he talked to those folks who knew how to build. And then he even talked about the chief cornerstone, which is what you have to have in a building. What am I saying? I'm saying to you, God is always going to use stuff that you are familiar with so he can reveal who he is through the same thing you know about. He would be unfair to give you something and you don't understand it. (laughs) See, how can God give you mysteries and what he's trying to tell you, you don't even know the subject matter. That's why the Bible said he'll bring all things back to your remembrance. But if you don't read nothing and remember nothing, what are you going to say to you? (laughs) I don't ever hear God talking to me. Well, you probably a person who don't never read the Bible. Tell me how 
I could be out on the track running and the Holy Ghost is talking to me and give me a revelation about what to preach and I'm running. Why did Paul talk about running a race? He was talking to those Olympians and people who knew about the marathons. He couldn't even style that going to heaven if he'd have told them sitting at home watching TV that it wouldn't have made sense. <laughs> so the first clue is you need to understand God not going to be so mystical. He's going to use something that you don't understand. I just want something deep. No, you don't. You know why you don't want nothing deep? Because he told you you don't leave the first principles of Christ. He deals with principles. And for some of you all who can't be principled and disciplined, it's going to be hard for God to deal with you. That's why you can't live life any kind of way. God is not the God of what? <laughs> and your life is full of chaos. How is God going to talk to you? You won't obey the street sign. You won't obey the pastor. You won't follow no rules. You won't even budget your own money. How is God going to revelate to you? See, and we need to stop all that if we're going to move forward. If you can't obey what God has before you, how can he come out of the cloud and talk to you if you won't do what he say? <laughs> when he called Jesus a savior, in the Greek, they all knew because they spoke Greek. It was one who brings salvation. That wasn't something new to them when they heard savior. And the word salvation was familiar because the people of that day, that was part of their vocabulary. Because even in slavery, when you talked about salvation, that meant deliverance. It meant deliverance from trouble. It particularly meant deliverance from an enemy. So when Jesus came talking about he was the savior, a lot of people succinct with that because they were in an impoverished time. And they were under Roman rule. Now watch this. Why do you think he had to rebuke the disciples when they asked him, Jesus, are you coming to deliver us from this government? He said, no. He said, I came to save that which is lost. They heard the Savior, the Deliverer was coming, and they were ready to get out from under the Roman rule. Read your Bibles. And, they, and that's when Jesus said, let them render unto Caesar. What's it? In other words, all this political stuff, let them deal with that. I ain't dealing with that. Why do you think most slavery songs are dealing with getting victory over the enemy and being free because they knew what salvation was they did not have bibles they couldn't read but they knew what salvation was it also carried the same idea of health and safety a physician was looked on as a savior because he helped deliver the body from pain and limitation. <laughs> Even a victorious general back in that day was known as a deliverer or a savior. Why, Wesley? Because he delivered them from their enemies. He defeated the enemy for them. Even a wise official who was in government was looked at as a savior. Why? Because he kept the nation in order and delivered them from chaos and confusion. 
What do most people tell you if you're able to deal with your family and have a good financial structure? They tell you, you're the savior of this family. And you're not going to, you ain't died on no cross. Can't you see what Jesus was doing? He was just using the same thing they were familiar with, but showing them a spiritual outcome. I'm coming now to set you free. I'm giving you a confidence now that will place you above Satan. They needed deliverance. <laughs> it requires little insight if you really understand to deal with the title of Savior and how it applies with Jesus Christ. He is indeed the great physician who heals the heart from sickness and sin. How many times did Jesus have to tell us that? What was their biggest fault with Jesus? Among publicans and sinners. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, those that are healed need no physician. I'm coming to those who sick. They don't want to need a physician. So y'all sitting up in all these robes, being grand, talking about what you know and what you got. I don't need to help you. But these, there's some people over here barely can hang on. Minds are jacked up. I need to go get them out of lunacy and lunatics. I need to bind the devil. I need to stop that boy from throwing himself in the fire and coming out. Come on, somebody. I am the great physician. <laughs> and they still didn't get it. Guess why? That's a question. Because they didn't have no faith in Jesus. That's the only reason why they didn't get it. They didn't want to believe who he was. Ah. He is the victorious conqueror who has defeated our enemies. I don't know. I don't have too many enemies. You know, the devil, the devil, the devil. Let me help you out. Your number one enemy is sin. I wish I had some takers on that. Your biggest enemy is sin. And he defeated sin for you. If you have the faith, he said, for this reason only, Jesus came to condemn sin in the flesh. You could walk around as a fleshy person and yet be sinless. Your second enemy is death. You know the one y'all scared of. He delivered you from death. Woo! Great! You can't hold me down. Death! You ain't done nothing to me. A little mosquito bite. Where's your sting at? Somebody better talk up in here to me. You talking about it was treacherous? I done went through death, and oh, what a sweet time I had. And Satan, you know the one y'all give all the credit to, all the faith y'all got in. The one y'all believe can do anything and have all power. He went to Satan's house, kicked in the dough. Say, give me the key. I got death and hell in my hands. What you going to do now? He did that so you didn't have to stay there. And all those who died in the faith, when they said, wait, 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 wait. That sounds like Jesus. Get up, get up, Jesus. Done. Here comes Jesus. He got them folks who died 42 generations before he got there. And got them out. And then bragged about it. So I got the keys of death and hell in my hand. They used to hang on the wall, sister, but I took them off the wall. Got 
got death over hell. And he's not done yet. He's got a parade. But you don't want to get in it. He's leading the parade in triumph. He's got the victory. <laughs> and then gave you the victory over sin, over hell, over death, over the grave, even over Satan. He's leading us in triumph. That's why your faith doesn't put you on center stage. You can't hide. Walk in your victory. Tell the devil you're used to, but you can't no more. I used to be scared of you, but I'll slap you down if you come over here. I ain't thinking about you. You ain't nothing but a lying one to shut up. You could just tell him, say that the Lord rebuke you. He got to shut up. You done forgot what you got. Sitting around waiting on somebody to come. Ain't nobody coming. You the, you the deliverer. You're the tree of righteousness. You're the one with the praise. You're the one with all the glory. In order to be our Savior, he gave his life on the cross and died for the sins of the whole world. After this, I've got to stop. I want to share this scripture because it wouldn't make sense. But let me, let me share this one scripture in the Amplified. It's the Greek. See, whenever you read the Amplified, it's the Greek translated. So if you want to know the real uh, how would I say it? Authentic uh, use of the word. Read the Amplified Version when it's in the New Testament. That's, that's the Greek translated. Write this down and read it when you get a chance. But 2 Corinthians 2 and 14 said, But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumph mm -hmm. as trophies of Christ's victory. you in a victory parade and don't even know it. And through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. So because you have faith in Jesus, you in a victory parade. Amen. Because Jesus is leading the parade. He didn't already brag. I got the keys. And Father, I gave everyone eternal life who you gave to me. None of them going to perish, but the son up at the now, if you ain't Satan, that means you ain't going to perish. Oh. We walking behind Jesus, and Jesus is bragging about, look at all my trophies I got. Look at all my folks that believe in me. Look at all my folks I done delivered from drugs and demons and devils and the dope den. Look at all the folks that's following me now. I done took them out of prostitution, back page, and all the crazy stuff. These are all the people that's in victory right now. And you mean to tell me you can't go forward? You mean to tell me your faith ain't nothing? You mean to tell me you waiting on something? What, what else you waiting on? The Bible said the time is now. Today is the day to declare the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Today is the day to go on record and tell Satan, I got the victory. I got this most precious faith. 
I got what God gave me, and ain't nobody going to cower me down. But your life got to believe and begin in faith. You can't get faith in the middle of this. Uh-uh. Uh, what happened to Peter in the middle? What happened to Peter in the middle? Peter started singing. <laughs> he had been a disciple the whole time, believing God the whole time. See, 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 when you forget what you got, you go back to doing whatever you used to do. <laughs> Jesus had to save him. But, but at least Peter had the consciousness to say, help me, Lord. Save me, Lord. How many of y'all feel like sometimes you're sinking? Just reach your hand up and say, Lord, save me. God, save me. Come on, God. God, don't let me fall. Don't let me, don't let me slide. Don't let Satan have the victory. Save me, Lord. Sheba. Hosibia. And then the master of the sea, who heard your barren cry, will stretch his hand out, and out of the water, he'll lift you. You can say, oh, save them, I. Save by his power divine. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for peace. I might be wracked with pain, but I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm set free. Shandibiosa. Kabasa. Tosibia. Mantekebe. Babobosia. Hebia. Thank you. And let me help you out. Let me help you out because I'm trying to help somebody. You, it, he's there. But it's like gas. How, how high you want the fire to burn? You just want to sit there and simmer all the time. It's going to take a long time. Try to cook a cup, pot of beans with the fire this high. Huh? But when you ignite your praise, when you get excited about what God has done, when you lift your voice like a trumpet, when you shout to your king at the top of your lungs, God will deliver you. Shando, Shabaka, Taban Sandit Bibiosia, Hosa, thank you. He said he bless a glad heart. I dare you to get excited about God. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't you ever blame God. He's all power. Tell me I can't feel him. Turn up the heat. You can't feel him. Turn the fire up. You won't even open up the door to your temple. How are you going to come in with your mouth shut? You don't never say thank you, Lord. You don't never say hallelujah. You don't never say, Lord, I love you. God ain't thinking about you. But I dare you to praise him. I dare you to thank him. I dare you to be glad. I dare you to start shouting. I dare you to let him know how much you love him.
Sit down. Sit down. Tell Sabah. Hey, Baba and Sanda. We got the faith that'll raise the dead. We got the faith that'll move mountains. He said, I bless a glad heart. You glad about everything else but God, you only going to get everything else but God. But when you get excited about it, you can be at home getting dressed. I can't wait to see what the Holy Ghost is going to do today. You'll have a party for you put your shoes on. For you put your hat on. For you do anything you want to do, you'll already be praising God. My God. What he gave us goes with us. That's why he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the age. Even when your bones is in the, in the tomb, God's still going to be there watching over you. He's still going to be waiting to call you up to victory. God's not a God that lies. If you think I'm telling the truth, read your Bible. In the Old Testament, Elijah was loved by God so, and God worked with that man so, until they stumbled in on his grave and a dead person got up. You can live until your bones heal, folks. And you ain't even got to be around. Shut up talking to me. It's in the book. The Bible said there ain't nothing new under the sun. But the, but the question is, are you going to be that person? Are you going to be that person that still can bless folks you ain't even here no more, but because of what you lived? Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Sister Jeray, I, I ain't, I ain't, I, listen, Sister Jeray, I ain't, even, I ain't even panicking over my family. You know why? I'm sacrificing living now. When I'm dead and gone, I know God going to have some holy folks in that family. I'm living now, so the folk coming behind me. I don't even know their names, Sister Yolanda, but the ones coming behind me going to have the Bosatio. Cantadosata. They got the Dodosa, the Biosa. They're going to be connected to God because of what I did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I'm living like I'm living. You got to understand, you got the power to bless six generations. I don't want my generation struggling like these folk today. I want God to be with them, and I want them to know God's with them. So I'm sacrificing now. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, I said I was going to stop. I'm through. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Come on, come on. Bless.